Good morning, class. Welcome to Spirit of Faith. I'm Harold Ritter. This is our third day together. Uh, happy Wednesday to everyone. Uh, I wanted to start today by just reviewing our theme scriptures. You know, we we pick these scriptures because they represent the the main topic of the course. Uh, before we go over that, though, just a reminder about the reading assignments. You're to read Numbers 13 and 14 on your own, not just because we covered it in class. Also, Romans chapter 4, which we'll be delving into more as we talk about Abraham either this afternoon or, t I mean, today or tomorrow, uh, then Romans 4 and Romans 10, and of course, the great Hall of Fame of Faith, which is Hebrews chapter 11. And don't forget the book, which is assigned for this class. It's called Mountain Moving Faith. There's a particularly good chapter in here called Faith by Saying for Finances. How many need to believe God for finances? I'm telling you, if you're going to do something for God, the projects are going to be bigger than you can do in your natural you know, you're not going to be able to work and fund your own ministry. You're not going to be able to produce enough income with your little hobbies and schemes and businesses to fund the ministry. A God-sized a God-sized dream or a God-sized vision will require God-sized finances. So you might as well get used to the laws of prosperity, how it works. You know, in this chapter six, uh, Brother Hagin goes over how the Lord taught him about prosperity. And I encourage you to not only read it, but activate it. Put your faith out on a certain amount. Claim that amount and say, Father, I believe I receive this amount of money. Let's say it's $100. I believe I receive $100 out of this world system. Claim it by faith. Send out ministering spirits to bring the money into you. Uh, keep your confession right. Keep your love walk right. <laughs> Amen. Realize that God is for you and, and God is not keeping the money from you. Amen. So there's many good things in here. You know, it's a, a great review. Um, one thing that's in here, and I want to uh, start there today, is faith can grow. You know, so faith is, me we could say it this way, faith is measurable, okay? So you could start with a little faith, you could start with no faith, uh, but you can move up. You don't have to stay at a low level uh, just because you, you know, we all started, we all start at the beginning. And like I said, I was 20 years old when I got saved. So I didn't know Psalms from Palms and Job from Job, you know, so I just had to, I had so much to learn. I didn't know nothing. You know, I, I hardly knew to come out of, to come inside if it was raining. I mean, you know, I just didn't have uh, a whole lot of common sense. Some people say I still don't have a lot of common sense, but uh, I'm a whole lot better than I was when I was in Bible school. I mean, so so Mark chapter 4 in verse 40, let's just look at some references here talking about the scalability of faith, amen? And, uh, you know, just, you know, I'm, I'm going in uh, a lot of different directions just starting out here, but... Uh, why don't we, let me put this aside. I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit too fast. Let, let's just go with the slides here right now, and then we'll come back to the measurability of faith, okay? So we, we all have, uh, let's look at our theme scripture, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 13, okay? And 2 Corinthians, every, every day as we start our lessons, we look at our theme scriptures, amen? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, it says, since we have the same spirit of faith. Now, where did that spirit of faith came, come in? Amen? You know, God put a measure of faith inside of you. He put the capacity to have faith, to, to be just like this book is, is talking about, a speaking spirit, someone who believes and speaks and acts on the things that they believe. Amen? So those are the three uh, parts of faith, you know, that we believe something, we say something, and we do something. Amen. And, you know, we'll talk more about that today. <laughs> There's always so much to cover in this class, you know. So let's read. It says, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I speak, or therefore I spoke. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Amen? So again, he was quoting from Psalm 116, verse 10, David. You know, so David said, I believed, and therefore I spoke. Whatever I believed came out of my mouth. And isn't that consistent with what the Lord Jesus told us? He said in Luke, 
I'm sorry, Matthew, Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34, he said, out of the abundance of the heart, you know, what, what you're full of, your, your thoughts and your meditations, you know, that's why we have to turn off uh, CNN and all these news channels. And I, I know, you know, everybody says, well, I want to stay up on the latest and greatest, okay? Well, you need to stay up on the latest and greatest of what God's saying, amen? The Holy Spirit will lead you and the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, amen? Most of what's coming in media today is outright lies okay it's a it's a planned uh propaganda message you know to get you to believe something that's not true so we have to be very careful these days of what we listen to and not you know not to be uh not to be foolish you know because the lord he gives us wisdom uh on the inside you know he gives us a wisdom on the inside okay Okay, so we having the same spirit of faith, therefore we speak, amen? So let's look at our next theme scripture. It's found, well, before we go there, we're talking about, we're talking about speaking, right? Uh, we're talking about why God wants to change what we say and how critical it is to our success, not only in ministry, but also in life, that we have to begin to say what God says. We have to begin to talk like God talks. We can't go on uh, making up our own uh, narratives or listening to what everybody else around us is saying. We've got to get in this book and let it influence our thinking and our believing until it starts to change our confession and our actions as a result. Amen. So here's a here's a, a great truth, you know. Any time that God wants to change anyone's life, he touches their mouth. Amen. Any time God wants to change anyone's life, he touches their mouth. And if you think about salvation, the moment of conversion, you know, it happens when there's faith in your heart and it connects to your mouth and you begin to call upon the name of Jesus and you believe that God raised him from the dead. You have a belief system that's consistent with the message and you begin to call out and say, and, and the Bible simply says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So that's the beginning of the greatest change when you're born again, when you pass from death to life. Amen. So anytime God wants to change a life, and I believe God wants to do a major work in you guys. He wants, or you girls, <laughs> he wants all of you to be transformed. He wants you to start to have a renewed mind and a, a renewed speech. Amen. He wants you to talk like you've never talked before. He wants you to talk uh Big time, amen, like, like the way he talks. But let's talk, let, let's review this in the sense of what happened to Isaiah, you know, right at the beginning of Isaiah. And how many know Isaiah is the, the greatest of the, of the prophets, amen? And what does it say right at the beginning of the book of Isaiah about what happened? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 1, or sorry, verse chapter 6. Chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temples. And above, it stood, above the throne stood seraphim, and each one had six wings, and with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. And how many know this was a very terrifying scene, seeing the glory of God, seeing God seated on his throne, and the, the, the attendance of the angels, and the glory, the power, everything that emanates from his throne? And I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with thongs off the altar. And he touched my mouth with it, and he said, behold, I have touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Amen. And then I love verse eight, it says, and then I heard the voice of the Lord, who shall go, who shall I send? 
Who will go for us? Who will go for us? You know, who will go for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Who will represent the Godhead on the earth? Who will communicate the truth of the gospel? And then you can see that Isaiah raised his hand in verse 9, and or in verse 8, he said, Here am I, send me. I'll go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll be what you want me to be. Here am I, Lord. Get yourself glory through my life. Amen. So that's the that was the beginning of the change in Isaiah's life. You know, he said he looked at himself and he said, I'm not fit for this job. And God said, listen, I'm going to touch your mouth. I'm going to begin to have you say my words. I'm going to put my words in your mouth. Amen. And remember, we've reviewed this before, but God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. Amen. And the word of God was spoken so it could be written and it was written so it could be spoken. So our job is to uh, become speaking spirit, speak those who speak the word of God. We, d we don't say anything other than what God says. We train ourselves to be only moved by what God says to us. Look at Jeremiah chapter one and verse four. Whenever God wants to change a life, he changes, he touches the mouth. He begins to work through the mouth. Amen. <laughs> Remember, this is, this is the part where he puts the bit and he begins to steer us. You know, he'll steer us in the direction of his plan and purpose for our lives. Amen. So in Jeremiah chapter one, verse four, it says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Behold, I formed you in the womb and I knew you. Amen. How many know that life starts at conception? It doesn't stop. It doesn't start when the baby pops out of the womb. Amen. So children, the, the spirits that come from God, the father of spirits, they come into the womb when the child is forming. Remember, John the Baptist was kicking and he and his mother knew he was, uh, he was a spirit and he was alive even before he came out of the womb. Amen. He jumped. And when Jesus came into the room, I have formed you in the womb. I knew you before you were born. I sanctified you. I set you apart and I anointed you or I ordained you, appointed you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Amen. I believe people in this room are called to a ministry of the prophetic. You see, the prophetic ministry absolutely depends on you surrendering your mouth to God's use. Amen. Begin by speaking the word. Begin by praying often in the Holy Spirit. And then you will see that other things, as Paul said, I began, I pray in the spirit. I pray with the understanding also. When you perfect speaking out of your heart, you will begin to minister to people on a level that you've never touched before. Hallelujah. Verse six, and it said, then I said, oh Lord, I cannot speak for I am a youth. I don't know how to say what you want me to say. But the Lord said, do not say I'm a youth. Don't say, <laughs> how many times have we heard the Lord say this? Let the weak say I'm strong. You know, don't say what you have. Say what you want. Say what God says about you. Amen. Do not say I'm a youth for you shall go to all that I send you. And whatever I command, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And see, this day I have set you over nations and kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the power of the word, Father. Thank you for the prophetic gift. Thank you for the word spoken, the an anointed word spoken at the right time that even changes the courses and destinies of people throughout all the earth and throughout all time. You've used prophetic offices, Father. And this is the uh, this is the training for reigning, Lord. When we train ourselves to talk like you talk and to do what you do in circumstances and situations. Amen. So anytime God wants to change a life, he touches a mouth. Amen. I believe he's touching your mouth in this class. In Mark 11, in verse 22 through 25, let's turn there. 
And these are our theme scriptures, so don't get bored of them. We're going to go over them because, guess what? Repetition brings revelation. Just because you heard it one time doesn't mean you know it. I said repetition brings revelation. Just because you heard something one time doesn't mean that you know it. You've got faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That, you know, it, 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 faith doesn't come because you heard it one time. Faith doesn't come because one time you heard a message about healing. You know, no, it says hearing and hearing the word of God. So we have to continually feed our faith and starve our doubts to death. We have to continue to feed our faith. You know, Jesus talked about that man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word of God. You know, your spirit needs to hear the word. You need to be continually feeding. You know, my one of my practices is I'm continually reading the Bible, reading through the Bible. You know, normally I read the New Testament, but this year I'm reading the Old Testament. So every day I'm reading chapters out of the Old Testament. You can, if you read, if you read, uh, well, let me tell you about the New Testament. The two, New Testament, if you, if you read uh, one chapter a day, Monday through fi Friday, so that's five chapters in a week, you know, so Monday through Friday, read one chapter a day. So that's five chapters a week. There's 52 weeks in a year. So 52 times five is 260 chapters, 260 chapters. And guess what? There's exactly 260 chapters in the New Testament. So you can very easily be regularly reading through the New Testament. You know, you could be just every day, read a chapter, every day, read a chapter. And of course, if you do that, you're going to get hungry for more, you know, because once you, once you read one or two chapters, you're just be, man, I want to read more than this. I want to go look at Psalms, you know, Psalms, you, Psalms is 150 Psalms. Okay. So if you read five Psalms a day, five Psalms a day, you can read the whole book of Psalms in a month. How about Proverbs? Proverbs is set up pretty nice. It has 31 chapters. So it's almost exactly every month is almost exactly 31 days. So you can read through Proverbs continually, you know, so it's up to you. How hungry are you? How much of God do you want? How much change do you want? How much do you want him to invade your life and see the glory of God all over you? Amen. I can hear that one amen back there. Hallelujah. <laughs> so God is preparing us for that which he has prepared for us. Amen. And so let's read this, Mark 11, verse 22. It says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Now I want to draw your attention to the margin there. Maybe you don't have it in your Bible. But in many Bibles it says, have the faith of God, or we could say it this way, have the God kind of faith, have the God kind of faith. So there is a certain, there is, there is a natural human faith, but then there's the God kind of faith, okay? And the God kind of faith is a speaking faith. The God kind of faith will look at a mountain and a problem and a circumstance, and it will speak to it. It will begin to command it to change according to the word of God, amen? So we're not, we're not talking about, you know, some uh, metaphysical truth here. We're talking about faith in God's word. You know, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, these, this is where the power is released. So let's read the rest of this. Verse 23, it says, Jesus said, assuredly, I say to you, okay, I say to you that whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. And we broke this down earlier that, you know, these are different. The, the words say here is they're slightly different Greek words, and it's worth understanding those. Therefore, I say unto you, verse 24, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Whenever you pray or ask, believe that you receive them. Receive that they're yours. Whatever you desire, whatever you ask for, believe that you receive them and they'll be yours. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's review again uh, the Greek words that are in Mark eleven twenty three. It says, Verily I say, and this is Jesus now. So Jesus is saying, I say, I lego, okay, that word. It's a systematic discourse, or we could say a building block. 
okay? So words, words are your building blocks. And guess what? The particular words I'm talking about, or, or what Jesus was talking about, G Jesus said, assemble, I say to you, take the building blocks of God's word. Take the building blocks of God's word. The Lego of God's word. How many have seen Legos in the store that children assemble? Okay. Take the building blocks of God's word and begin to put together a systematic discourse. The building blocks of faith are the word of God. We've got to assemble what we believe. That's why you're in Bible school. You're, you're, you're creating a, syst a system of belief, a systematic, uh, let's say, a, a systematic <laughs> a system of belief, okay? Let's just say it that way. That, you know, there is, <laughs> we all believe something, and it's all based on what we've heard, okay? When we hear God's word, Faith comes for the God things of our life, amen? You know, everything, everything is influenced by words, you know? Ideas are communicated through words. So the words are your building block. Let's go back here, and it says, once you got your building blocks, once you have, you've put together what you wanna say, then whosoever shall say, that's the word epo, it's a command. So you're gonna have to speak to your problems. You're gonna have to tell it, to get out of the way. You're going to have to answer it. If it, if it says you're going to be poor, you're going to have to say, nope. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and it adds no sorrow. Uh, the blessing is on me. The blessing that makes rich is on me. I'm one of the covenant sons of Abraham. And there, how many know there's no Jews that are poor? Amen? Because they know their covenant. They know that prosperity is a blessing for walking with, with the one true God, amen? So you have to begin to command. You have to say, no, it's going to be like this. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And if you don't doubt in your heart, but believe, see, so believe is important, but it's not as important as saying, you know? Believing has to lead to saying. Believing has to lead to saying, amen? So if you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that those things which you say, and then here the word is laleo, it means to speak out. So not only are you commanding, but it's audible, okay? You're not, you know, saying it under your breath. No, you're, you're speaking out and somebody hears you. You're commanding it, and it's out there. The words are out there. You know, they're beginning to, the sound waves are going into the ethers, and the, those sound waves will attract attention. We'll talk about that probably tomorrow, amen? The, the, those sound waves, will they will attract the attention of good or evil, amen? But we're, when we're speaking the word, it attracts the attention of the heavenly host and things begin to happen and our lives begin to change. And then it, finally, the last one, it says, you shall have whatsoever you saith or whatever you lego. So that building block that you put together, you will have that, okay? You will have the thing for which you have desired, the thing for which you have asked, the thing for which you have believed. Amen? Because, and you get to the point where you're not doubting it anymore. You understand the principles of faith. You understand God is for you. You understand you're righteous before him. That he, it's a family business. God and sons, God and daughters. Amen? So that's, uh, the words are important. And Remember the spirit of faith, you know, and this is the class, the spirit of faith has an attitude and an action. Amen. And we could talk about the three parts of faith, which are simply believing, which is an attitude. Speaking is an action, but there's also an, an it's a way of releasing our faith. Amen. It's a way to receive that which belongs to us. Amen. You know, I'm, 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 I want to bring up another story here in Acts chapter 14. In Acts 14, there was a man at Lystra. And so they were at Lystra, they being uh, Paul and Barnabas. And they were, there was a certain man, and it starts in about verse 6, and it says, They became aware of it, and we fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and the surrounding region. And we were preaching the gospel there. 
And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting. He was a cripple from his mother's womb and had never walked. Well, you know, these are those impossible cases. How many know that with God, there is nothing shall be impossible? Wait till, you, wait till I show you the Greek of that verse. You will, you will freak out. It says, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Now, how does faith come? And I know I haven't covered it much in this class, but I trust that Pastor Tim did in your last class, that, he, that faith comes by hearing. You got to hear the message. Okay, you got to hear what God says about subjects. Okay, so apparently Paul was preaching about the healing power or the will of God to heal all people of all sicknesses in all time. So Paul was preaching and Paul observed him and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now, this is interesting. He has faith, but he's not healed. He's sitting there, still crippled, been there way for his whole life, but faith is in him. Faith, faith, he has a belief now. So what has to happen? He needs to do something. He needs an action of faith or a way to release his faith. You know, sometimes it's through words, but also sometimes it's through actions. Okay. So, so Paul saw this and he turned to him and he, 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 he yelled at him and he said, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Stand up straight on your feet. And he stood up. He acted on the word. He acted on what he believed. He immediately received strength in his legs. And he leaped and he walked. And all the people saw what Paul had done. And they raised their voices and said, Oh, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of man. So they were, they were touched. They realized that something supernatural had happened. Something had appeared. Some, the power was there, amen, to demonstrate the word with signs following. Hallelujah. So it's so wonderful when God shows up and God gives out, okay? I want to talk a little bit about this, though, because we're talking about the, the different parts of faith. I just want to review this, you know. Faith comes by hearing, right? So we know that we have to hear God's word, the spoken word. We have to hear anointed preaching. Amen. And thank God for today. There's so many sources now of anointed preaching, not only this Bible school, but there are things that happen in Bible school that don't happen when you're sitting at home watching YouTube. Okay. There's something called the, uh, there's a transference of the anointing. Okay. And it happens in the environment. It happens under the influence. Amen. Environment, influence, and association. So you're becoming associated with this Bible school and with the leaders of this Bible school. And God wants to associate you with people of faith and people of prosperity and people of, of vision, amen, and, and pioneers, amen. And so you'll go out and start things and you'll go out and expand the kingdom and you'll do the work of the ministry. And you won't be shocked, you know, that God is using you, amen, <laughs> hallelujah. Your mother might be shocked, but you won't be shocked, amen. Hallelujah. So it says here in uh, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, God says without faith, it's impossible to please him. Well, thank God he gives us the source of faith. Okay. He, he doesn't, he doesn't say, well, I'm expecting faith, but you know, I'm not providing an, a way for you to have faith, okay? The only way that faith can begin to grow is we have to hear the word. And brothers and sisters, we have to hear it a lot more than we think, okay? There's so much unbelief around us, and there's so many distractions, you know? I mean, the media and our cell phones and our, uh, you know, internet on our computers and everything is, you know, begging for our attention, movies, TV, whatever. But, you know, there's so many things that are trying to get into us through our eye gates, through our ear gates, okay? So we have to reserve special time where we just hear the word of God. I'm glad you're in Bible school here, amen? And then there's this, so there's the... The Bible is the revealed word of God. Sorry, it's the revealed will of God. The Bible is the revealed will of God. This is, the Bible is God's will for all people for all time. Amen? The Bible is God's will for all people for all time. So 
It's 66 books of God speaking to you. Amen. And he, you've got to, faith comes when you hear him in this book. Amen. God has an accent. He has, he sounds a lot like the Bible. Amen. When you get used to hearing the Bible, you'll pick up his voice. You'll pick, he's, he's always broadcasting, but we're not always listening because we don't recognize the way he talks. Okay. Just like I have an accent. I don't, I don't have a Swahili accent. I don't have a Kenyan accent. I have a New York, Oklahoma, California accent. So that's a crazy accent. And I know it's hard to understand, but all I can say is put your faith on that you're getting a deposit of truth, amen? <laughs> if you're not picking up everything I say, amen? And we're trying to help you with the screens and all the video things that are out here, okay? But here's the point. We've got to hear the uh, anointed word, amen? And that will help us. That will grow us, amen? We'll become strong in our spirits. We'll begin to, we have to feed that inner man, amen? Hallelujah. You know, the the inner man, there's a difference between the inner man and the outer man. You know, the outer man is the flesh and the inner man is the spirit. Amen. And somewhere in between is your soul or your mind, will, and emotions, you know, but the two f facets that Paul talks about, let's go to second Corinthians four, uh, second Corinthians four, second Corinthians four, verse 16. It says, therefore we don't lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing every day. We're getting older. You know, we came from the ground. We're going back to the ground. Okay. Every day, even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Inward man is renewed. How is he renewed? By the word. Amen. For these light afflictions, which are but for a moment, they work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. You know, the battles that we fight down here, they're, they're small and insignificant. But the word says the reward, you know, for standing and, and representing Jesus in your lifetime and doing his will and purpose for your life. While we don't look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal.
the unseen things. And that's, that's how you break through. We're going to talk about Noah today. You know, Noah saw the unseen. He saw, he saw rain when it had never rained. Okay. He saw judgment when God had been merciful up to that point. And, you know, we have to break through the scene because faith is not by sight. Amen. We walk by faith, not by sight. We have to break through uh, from the seen realm. You know, so then, so we have to have enough of the word of God in us by renewing the inner man, by feeding on the word that we begin to believe. And then we should begin to speak. You know, faith has a voice. Faith has a voice. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Did you know that everybody's voice is a unique is a, as unique as your fingerprint? There's three things about you that are c- completely unique. One is your iris or the shape of your eye, and that's the, how many have seen these security doors where they're you know they look at your eye and they can tell if it's you because your eye has a unique shape and no one else has a, that shape exactly. Same thing with fingerprints, and same thing with guess what voice print. You have a voice that is unique. And I'm telling you, God wants to use your voices. I keep coming back to this, but I think there's some prophetic calls in this classroom. God wants to use your voice, but he's got to get a hold of it, okay? You're not trained yet. You're not ready for reigning. You're still a work in progress. But God wants you to start renewing your mind and practice speaking. Practice speaking his word. Practice saying what God says about circumstances. Not what you think, not what you think is coming, uh, you know, that you're making it up as you go along. No, but learn to connect your heart or your, your mouth to your heart. So your voice is is your way of deliverance. Okay. Let me, let's go to Psalm 91. I know we're going a little bit off here, but it's all good, right? Psalm 91. Praise the Lord. Psalm 91 verse two. Psalm 91 we know is the Psalm of deliverance, you know, where God rescues his people. Did you know when Jewish people get sick, they read Psalm 91. You know, we, we think of Isaiah 53, but they read Psalm 91. But look what it says in verse two. It says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in him will I trust. How many, how many woke up this morning and said, God is my refuge. God is my fortress. In him will I trust. Amen. See, it, the, the spoken word, it releases God to do things in your life. Amen. So speaking the word is very important. Amen. <laughs> And then finally, there's acting on the word or steps that are, let's say, motivated by faith or let's say, well, let's just read it. First Thessalonians, there's things that we do that are an outbirth of our faith, okay? We'll begin to do things because of what we believe, it's a way of releasing our faith. Sometimes you release faith with words. Sometimes you release faith with actions, okay? So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3, it says, 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, it says, remembering without ceasing, your, I remember, or Paul's writing to the Thessalonians, he says, I remember without ceasing, I, don't rem- I keep remembering this, your work of faith, your work of faith, Wow your labor of love, and your patience in hope of the Lord Jesus Christ in the, in the sight of God and Father. So I like how the Amplified says it. It says, let me, let me read it from the Amplified. I have a few translations up here, NIV, New King James, Amplified. But the verse, verse 3, it says here, Rem- I remember unceasingly before God the Father your works, which were energized by faith. Your works were energized by faith and your service that was motivated by love and your unwavering hope in the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Messiah. So there's a work 
that we do or in actions that we do that are motivated, energized by faith. Because of our faith, we begin to do something. You know, it might be going to plant a church. It might be going uh, to lay hands on the sick. There's going to be something that you do that are going to be actions motivated and energized by faith. You might sow a seed. You might say financial seed. I'm going to plant seed into this ministry. You might do a number of things because you're motivated, energized by faith that because of a belief system, it needs expression. It needs release, you know, and, and like Paul yelled at that guy, you need to do something. Stand up, stand up. You've got faith to be healed. And sure enough, he jumped up and he received his healing. Amen. So thank you, Lord. And another uh, scripture that talks about the doing side of faith. And again, uh, you, I would hope that this was covered already, but I, don't, I wasn't in Pastor Tim's class, so I don't know. But I know that there is an action of faith, and this is described in James chapter 2. James chapter 2, you know, when the actions of faith, in verse 14 it says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says they have faith but does not have works? What? what a person can say they believe something. Like you can say, I believe in prosperity, but I don't tithe. What good does that do him? <laughs> what kind of, will that, say, will that faith save him? I believe in prosperity, but I don't give God any of my money. <laughs> well, it's not all yours. It's 10% is his. Hallelujah. Amen. And then it goes on, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says, depart in peace, be warm, be filled, does not give him things which he needs, what is profit is that? Thus, your faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead, verse 17. So faith by itself is dead if it doesn't have some works. Amen? Someone would say, you have faith, but I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. So, so there is a time to do something that demonstrates what you believe, okay? And again, the Holy Spirit will show you when it's time to, to jump up and receive your blessing. You know, there's, I'm telling you, faith begins where the will of God is known. And we're going to see that the afternoon class is as equally important as this morning class, you know, that we need to both learn the principles of faith and the principles of being led by the Spirit. They're so, they're so intertwined, uh, I, I can't overemphasize that great truth, amen? So, so speaking is an action, there are other actions, amen? <clears throat> you know, I wanted to talk about <clears throat> the... There's a certain fish um, called a salmon. I don't know if you have salmon here in, in uh, the country of Kenya. They're usually in cold water places. But the thing with a salmon, a salmon is called the fighting fish. Because you know what a salmon does? A salmon will swim, and they're big, you know. They swim upstream. They don't go with the current. They swim against the current. And and part of their... Part of their uh, life cycle is before they die, they want to go to the place where they were born. Okay. So the salmon are hatched and born in certain parts, certain rivers and certain places around the world. And the salmon wants to get back to the place, the exact place. They have an amazing GPS built in them. I mean, how can you, how can you look at creation and not believe in God? Okay. How does a fish travel 2,000 miles to get back to the place where he was born. How does that happen? Okay. How, does, how do birds know exactly when to go and when to come? Migration of birds, animals. How about the, the great migration that occurs in the, uh, here in the Maasai? when the, all the animals migrate through Tanzania and up into Kenya and back and forth? How does that all happen? If there's no creator, there's no designer. Those things didn't happen by chance. These things happen because there is a God. Amen. My string is getting pulling. I just want to stay connected so you can hear me clearly. Hallelujah. So what happens? Where did this, how does this fish know to get there? And, and he, he'll fight. He, so he fights the currents. He's going upstream. And then sometimes he, he, he'll, 
he'll meet uh, a place where there's rocks and boulders and you know the currents are coming down over the rocks. Well, this fish will jump out of the water and land on the rocks and then jump again and jump again. And they'll literally climb up these rocks to get upstream. They're so determined. And then sometimes there's bears, you know, bears, big brown bears. And the bears are next to the water because they know these salmon are coming. And they're like, ooh, 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 lunch. And they're waiting for the salmon to jump out of the water. And then they grab a salmon and have a salmon for lunch. Why, why am I talking about salmon? Because salmon are a fighting fish. You know, they're fighting to get into the plan of God, the will of God. So let's look at this quickly. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. The fighting fish. Are you a fighting fish? Are you determined to fight your way into the will of God? Are you determined to find his plan and purpose for your life? Amen. You know, Paul, at the end of his life, he wrote this. 2 Timothy is the last book he wrote. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he said, We have fought the good fight. We have finished the race. We have kept the faith. We have fought the fight. We have finished the course. We have kept the race. And I'll, I'll just, I'll go with, I believe there's, there's something we can learn from these salmon, okay? That there is a plan of God for you, but it's going to take some swimming upstream to get there. You're going to have to swim against the currents. You're going to have to jump over some rocks. You're going to have to do the impossible. Amen. You're going to have to avoid the traps of the enemy, the bears. Amen. Because there's something in you that's very precious, the word of God. And if you get to the right place at the right time and you are able to sow what's in you, if you're like I'm doing today, I'm giving out what's been deposited in me over many, many, many years. I'm giving it out so that it can fertilize you. And you can have the spirit of faith. Amen. There's eggs in each of us. There's deposits in us. And God wants us to find and finish. He wants us to find the course, the place, and to finish the work that he has ca called us to do. Amen. Paul said he kept the faith. I believe that that was how his words and his actions, amen? He believed, he said things, he did things, amen? That, that lined up with his system of belief, amen? And finally, let's look at Acts 13 and 36. You know, David is a great example for us. Acts 13, 36. David said, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, he fell asleep. He served his own generation by the will of God, and he w fell asleep and was buried with his fathers, and he saw corruption. But notice what he did with his life. He served God in his generation. And I believe this is God's will for all of us. He wants us to serve God in our generation. You know, e each generation must reach that generation. God has no grandchildren, okay? This isn't, uh, you, you don't get into the kingdom by natural birth. You get into the kingdom by spiritual birth. So every generation must reach that generation. And it's going to take faith, brothers and sisters, to be able to find and finish and keep the faith and serve God in your generation. It, you're going to have to use these principles of faith. Amen. But part of that is if we keep our if we keep our speaker, our mouth, connected to our believer, our spirit then the spirit of faith will carry us to our divine destination. Can you say that with me? When we keep our speaker, our mouth, connected to our believer, our spirit, then the spirit of faith will carry us to our divine destination. When we keep our speaker, our mouth, connected to our believer, our heart, then the spirit of faith will carry us to our divine destination. Amen? You will have what you say, amen. You will have the results of connecting a heart faith to words of faith, amen. Remember, the Bible talks about Paul. Let's go to Romans 10 for a moment. Thank you, Lord. I'm so happy about this class. 
I like to, I like to exercise my faith. You know, one thing I do right now is when I talk about my ministry, I say, Lord, I have more, I have more invitations than I can get to in a year. I have more invitations than I can get to in a year. Amen. And another thing I like to say is, Lord, thank you for doors. You know, Paul was, Paul spoke of doors of utterance. He said, there are many doors of utterance, but there are many adversaries. There's many bears trying to stop me. Amen. But there's doors of utterance. So I began to just say, Lord, I thank you that I have a 52 weeks a year. My schedule is full year in and year out that doors and more doors open to me that I'll have, I'll have more invitations than I can get to in a year. Amen. Cause I believe that the, the harvest is great and the workers are few. Amen. It isn't that there isn't much to do. There's, t there's too much to do. Amen. And you say, well, I'm not very busy right now. Well, why don't you just release your faith and say, Lord, here am I, send me, put me into my place, Lord, help me get to my divine destination that you have appointed for me. So I can do the things that you have appointed and really prepared for me, Lord, since the beginning of time. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a, hallelujah. So is this, is this important? I don't, you know, sometimes you guys look at me like, Brother Harold, why are you laboring so much on saying, well, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Did you forget? Did you forget that, brothers and sisters? Let's go back there. Remember, repetition brings revelation. So you might need to hear this a couple more times. And since you're in Bible school and you can't leave without permission, <laughs> let's go to Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2. It says, Proverbs 6 and 2, it says, You are snared by the words of your own mouth. You're taken by the words of your mouth. You're, you're entrapped by what you're saying. Okay. I like the NIV. It says you're trapped by what you said. You're ensnared by the words of your mouth. You're held back by those words. And I, I told you my story about trying to get through calculus class. Amen. And I, you know, I kept making the mistake of saying what I, what I had instead of what I believed, you know, I didn't apply faith. And, and that's what the word of God is talking about in Hebrews chapter four, Hebrews chapter four and verse two. Hebrews 4 and 2. This is for you, not for me. Hebrews 4 and 2, it says, For indeed the gospel was preached unto us as well, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith by those who heard it. Amen? Not being mixed with faith. So the faith is in your heart. The words are in your mouth. You've got to mix them together. You've got to be like Paul. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Verse 8, it says, what does it say? The word is near you, here, even in your mouth and in your heart. It's, it's ready. The word is near you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. If you can, that is the word of faith which we preach. You know, this is a word of faith school. This is a word of faith ministry. Paul was a word of faith preacher. Don't be ashamed of the word of faith. Amen. Dance with the ones who brought you to the dance. Amen. <laughs> so if faith brought you to this school, then stick with faith. You know, God wants, there's a different emphasis in different people in the body of Christ. But what I find when I get around so-called prophetic people is they don't know the word very well. Okay. They don't know what we're talking about here. And I'm like, wow, you know, I understand you understand that they have develop themselves in certain parts of the Bible, but we have something to contribute also. We have something that can fill and make them strong because, you know, the gifts of the, the gifts, the ministry gifts are given to us all for the profiting of all. Amen. So some of you, you know, you're going to, you're going to master this message and you're, it's going to be important in this nation that there's word of faith preachers who understand how to mix faith in their mouth and can win victories. Amen. But I want to go over these uh, right now. I didn't go over them before. Uh, so write these down. We'll do this right up into the break probably. And then we'll come back and we'll talk 
about the war of words, amen, and how to win the war of words, amen. So Proverbs chapter 15, <clears throat> let's go to Proverbs 15 and verse 28. Say, praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 15, how important are the words that you speak? You know, is Brother, is brother Harold just kind of uh, overemphasizing these things? It says here, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer. And that's what we're doing. You know, we're beginning to study the word so we know how to answer every problem and every circumstance that comes along. Okay? That we're not moved by every wind of doctrine. But no, we have we have our building blocks of faith. We've 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 taken the word of God and we've assembled it. We've we've created our Lego of believe our belief system and and we're ready to say what we believe amen we're not going to say what we have we're going to say what we believe because the things that are seen are temporal but the things that are unseen and the word of god is part of that they're eternal the word of god is eternal the words that i speak to you are spirit and they are life but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil you know people that don't know god they just say anything any kind of junk comes out of their life, out of their mouth. Amen. Let's look at um, <clears throat> let's look at chapter sixteen, <clears throat> Proverbs sixteen, verse twenty-three. You know, Solomon wrote this. Solomon was the wisest man that lived. You know, so Solomon knew, had some understanding of the power of words. You know. Uh, Proverbs 16, 23, it says, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth. And he adds learning to his lips. Amen. Pleasant words, 24, are like honeycombs, pleasant to the soul and health to the bones. The right words are sweetness to the soul. They minister comfort. Amen. And health to the bones. They literally affect you. Like we said before, the speech center in your mind dominates all the other aspects. So when you when you say the right thing, when you say what God says, it affects you, okay? He sent his word to heal you. You need to speak God's word over your body. You need to speak God's word over your finances. You need to speak God's word over your family. You need to speak God's word over your vehicles and for protection. Amen. Speak God's word. Look at Proverbs 17 and 27. Proverbs 17 and 27. He that has knowledge, he that has studied the word, spares his words. He who has knowledge spares his words. And a man of understanding is of a calm spirit. Hmm. Look at the next verse. It says, even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace, when he shuts up. Amen. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perceptive or wise. Oh, he must know something. He's not running his mouth. Amen. But I like verse 27. The one who has knowledge will begin to spare his words. He'll begin to craft his words. He'll, he just won't talk about everything all the time. He won't just run his mouth all the time. He'll begin to measure his words so they produce a result. Amen? He'll no longer be like chapter 18, verse 7. Chapter 18, verse 7, it says, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are a snare to his soul. A fool just runs his mouth, and it turns to destruction. It opens him up for destruction. Amen. Let's go to 18, uh, verse 20 and 21. <clears throat> a man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his lips. Amen. Brothers and sisters, get a hold of this. You know, you can begin to be, you can be different. You can, you can be different. You can talk different. You can have a different life. You can be esteemed differently. Amen. And I don't care what age you are, how young you are. Amen. It's just a matter of taking, don't let anyone despise your youth. Some of you are young, but don't let anyone despise your youth. Master this subject. Get the word inside of you. Begin to be a word speaker. 
And people will be attracted to that because you will be ministering life and health. It says, <clears throat> a man's stomach will be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth and the produce of his lips he will be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Let's go back to Proverbs 12 and 18. 12 and 18. Proverbs 12 and 18, it says, There is one who speaks like the piercing of a sword. Ooh. Ever hear, heard somebody, you don't want to listen to them anymore? Their, their words are like knives. Their words wound. Their, wound their, their, their words cut people and, and cut them down. And, and, you know, it's terrible to live in a household like that. There is one who speaks like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The tongue of the wise promotes health. Amen. The tongue of the wise promotes health. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go back to the same chapter 12 here. Let's look at verse 13 and 14. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through the trouble. <laughs> you know, and like I told you, I, I had some trouble with jobs. You know, people laid me off. But I learned to speak out of my heart, you know. I learned to say, I learned to say, the next job I'll have opportunity and exposure. And then sure enough, the next job I got so much opportunity, so much training, and it just propelled me forward. Then an another time I was laid off and I said, I'm going to, my next job, I'm going to have double the money and half the work. Amen. I, I, you know, this is not a trick. You know, you can do it. Just learn to speak out of your heart. Learn to answer your problems. Okay. We're going to talk here in a moment, uh, maybe after the break, about the war of words. Okay. You have to, in life, you have to win the war of words. Amen. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's go to Proverbs, uh, 13 and verse two, Proverbs 13 and two, it says, a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I I do a lot of traveling in the ministry now, you know, and a lot of it is international. And uh, so I'm believing God for business class or better. Amen. I say, Lord, I always travel business class or better because I'm on kingdom business and you give me favor and you and good deals and freebies and you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how many times I just get free upgrades you know where I look at my ticket and I'm in first class or I'm in business class and my ticket was a coach fare you know so I've seen this happen over and over but what I'm believing for right now is every trip prepaid every trip prepaid before I every time I get on that plane it's the whole trip is already paid for. Uh, the tickets are paid for all of, the, you know, cause when I come, I want to be a blessing. I want to bring, I want to bring materials. I want to, you know, I, I don't want to just come uh, and just show up. I want to be able to be a minister while I'm here. You know, I want to bless my hosts, the people that I stay with. Amen. So I want to bring things for them. I want to leave an offering for the ministry. So you know, that's in my heart. So I, I set a budget for the trip and, and I just put my faith on it and say, Lord, it's going to cost this much to go. And I want to have this much to give. And I, and here's the expenses. And I just believe that before I get on that plane, before I leave, that all my trips are prepaid and there's an abundance, there's money my travel account is loaded with funds. Amen. And, and brothers and sisters, I, I, I learned this from another traveling minister. You got to say what you want. Don't say what you have. Begin to release faith for greater things to happen in your life. Amen. So always confess abundance. Okay. Never confess lack. If you talk about the lack of money, it will stop the money from coming in. If you talk about the lack of money, it will stop money from coming to you. If you talk about the lack of money, it will stop money from coming to you. And I don't want you to be cut off from your supply. Amen. Of course, the enemy does. The enemy wants to cut you off from your supply. Now, l l let's finish with this, then we'll go to break. How important is this word thing? Okay. And I said, well, Brother Harold, you know, he he's into it. He's into the word thing, you know, so... 
he, he made a whole course. He made up this course. You know, it's called Spirit of Faith. And he decided that this course needs to be about the spoken word, the rhema, what we say. The written word was written so it could be spoken, you know. So some people don't think this is important. But let's go to Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Okay, and we're going to look at Moses. How many know Moses was a, a, the servant of God? And the most prominent figure in the Old Testament is Moses. Give, wrote the first five books of the Bible. Some, he wrote some, uh, the psalm. It was at least one psalm written by Moses. Okay. So let's go to Moses. And this is a very interesting story. Okay. It starts in, uh, it's in uh, chapter 20, Numbers chapter 20 and verse 7. And it says, the Lord said to Moses, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, he spoke to Moses saying, take the rod, your rod, you and your brother Aaron, and gather the assembly together. So you take your rod, get your brother, get all the people, and then speak to the rock. Everyone say, speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield water. Speak to the rock, and thus you shall bring water out of the rock, and you will drink and give drink to the congregation and their animals. Is that pretty clear? Get everybody together. You, Aaron, the rod, stand there and speak to the rock. Speak to the rock and command it. Command the rock to yield water before their eyes. So, verse 9, Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the people together before the rock. And he said to them, Hear ye, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand, and he struck the rock twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation and the animals drank. Verse 12, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, Because you did not believe me, to hollow me or respect me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. And this water was the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel contended with the Lord, and he was hollowed among them. So here the Lord says simply, because you believe me not, and because you did not sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this congregation in. Amen. Is this an important principle to God to speak to things? You know, Jesus is our rock. Amen. And there was, well, there was many things that happened here. But when I first read this story, I was really moved. I was like, Lord, he doesn't get to go in. His whole life he's been, he's given to these people and he's led them and he's served them. And now you're going to take away his reward? You're going to take away him going in because he didn't do, what? what is it about this that so made you upset with Moses? Like what, what did he do wrong here, you know? And here's the point. Moses hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And I'm telling you right now, brothers and sisters, there's some of you that are hitting your problems and trying to fix it yourself instead of speaking it to you. And here's the principle. If you don't learn to speak to things, you're not going into the promised land. If you don't learn to speak to things, you're, if you keep trying to solve your own problems and your own strength, Instead of speaking God's word over it and letting him intervene, letting him get the glory and sanctifying him and honoring him and hollowing him before others. If you don't stop this, then you're not going into your promised land because only the promised land is only entered by faith. And one of the greatest principles of faith is that we have to speak to our mountains. We have to speak to the problems. We have to speak to things 
and cause the things to change through the spoken word. Amen. And when I, again, when I, when I saw this, I was, I was like, Lord, that's, it's so, such a harsh punishment, you know, that Moses is going to be buried somewhere. We don't even know where he's buried, somewhere in the sand. But this lifestyle of faith, it's what really separates the men from the boys and the girls from the women. Amen. This ability to look at problems. This principle is very important to God. And, and when, when the type, the topology here was broke down by Moses, when God said, speak to it, and he hit it, God said, no, that's not the way. That's not the way we're going to get things done. Okay, we're going to get things done by the spirit of faith, which believes and speaks. Amen. So if you want to go to the promised land, you're going to have to confess. You're going to have to confess the word of God over your problems. Amen.